Hello YouTube. So I'm going to teach you today how to use the Daisy Geometry Maker. This is still currently in development. It's not as full final release yet, but you're free to check it out and use it and hopefully give me some tips on what to add and what maybe needs changing because I'm not a full, I don't know really that much about importing geometry. It's just my friends are teaching me and I've, I'm trying to automate things for everyone to make everyone's life a lot easier. So to download this, you need to just download this Python file for now. So you can click on it, create geometry.py and click this download icon here. And for this to work correctly, you will need Armour Toolbox. So this link will be in the description. So will this one for my tool. So Armour Toolbox, you go to the releases page on the right hand side. You download the latest release and then you install that into Blender itself. So I'm going to go into Blender and to install the add-ons, you simply go to Edit, Preferences, go to the Add-ons tab on the left and drop down Install from Disk. So you want to install the Armour Toolbox first and then you want to install Daisy Geometry Maker as well, which is just a Pi file. So you install the zip for them and you install the Pi one for mine right now. So that's installed. Let's open a model up like just some mesh. So import, no, not import, sorry, open. I'm going to open up my chains project and I'm going to turn this one off because this one I was working on earlier. I'm going to delete all the, the geometry mesh and I'm going to start on the, uh, let's have a look which one I'll do. I'll do the, the point in hand, but now I'll do the punk skull. There we go. So these are key chains that we're going to be adding to the game and attaching to weapons and stuff like that. And also going to be collectibles, so you can like hang them up in your in your base if you want to collect them. So this one's um, seven thousand polys. It's really low, quite to be honest with you. So let's get this started. We're gonna let's all get this out of the way. We don't need that. We're gonna on the panel. It's in the uh, tools panel. So on the right hand side here, you have got tools. You want to extend this. The create Daisy geometry. Click on the eyedropper tool and select your model. And then you can simply start going through and make sure or make sure you're also in object mode because edit. I'll show you this edit mode issue. Look, so I try to do this. It gives you an error because you're in edit. And if you get an error, by the way, like this big red thing down here, double click it. And this, whatever the last issue, whatever the last line is on this is normally the issue. So it says it cannot be called while the object is in edit mode. So up here in the top left corner, you're going to go to object mode. And because that created this box for geometry, I don't want this no more. I'm going to delete this, delete the box and turn the serial killer back on. That's not what we was working on though, is it? Undo because what it's done is it's added the box directly to the mesh of the actual punk skull. So let me um, zoom back in, go back into object mode. And then with this in the um, select object with this again, you just click create geometry creates a box that perfectly fits around it with minimal space and around it. So it's, it's really ideal. And then you want to do the create view geometry it does exactly the same thing. And all of these are also getting the, um, the correct armor properties. So you've got the auto center and stuff like this. Um, we're going to create a view pilot, which is a simple copy of the main model with, if we've got a view pilot, it's got the view pilot lod there. And it's also still got the hidden selections and stuff, which is good. And then we'll go back to this one. So with fire geometry, like you've got different values of levels. So I'm going to start with, because this is a small model, I'm going to do a, a level two. So if I create geometry, that's the geometry that was created. If I undo that and I turn this up to 10, create geometry. I, I've just seen an issue here. So on 10, it seems to create one called component 01. Let me check the other levels. Yeah, it's creating component 01. This should be fixed in the next update, but if it isn't, change this to fire geometry. Uh, I don't actually want to keep that one. That's too much of a high detail for what I'm on. So I'm going to undo again. I'm going to set this back down to two. There doesn't need to be too much fire geometry on this model. So I'm going to create fire geometry, change this name to fire geometry. Which again, this will be automated soon. Probably by the time the video is up, this should already be fixed. So we've got the fire geometry. Let's create memory. 
So with the memory, there's loads of different point clouds you can add. So these are the ones I've got so far. I've got the default points, which are the band and box min, band and box max, and the inventory view. I've got the box radius. No, not box radius, the CE radius, sorry. I've got the CE center as well. I don't need any of these. I might keep center, actually. And then we've got the Konek Halvany and the Usti Halvany. So these are for where the bullet travels from the, through the barrel. We've got the bolt access points. Uh, we've got bullet eject points, which is the Nabon. The, these things, you probably know what they are. It's just, I don't know how to use them just yet. So a video on that will be coming. And so is the IADS. It's probably the only one I really understand. So we don't need none of these because this isn't a weapon. I just need the default points. And I'm going to add CE Center as well. So then you click Create Memory Points. So you can see we've got the bounding boxes. I've also got one set all the way over here. This will go to edit mode and they disappear. Click on this point up here, the select mode. And you can see there's one still there. So to actually see what the name of this one is, I think you can go through this way, vertex groups and select. No, you can't do it this way. So I'm just going to click somewhere out here in the empty space just once and it will deselect it all. I'm going to click on this geomet uh, data tab down here. It's like a green triangle. Scroll up and you can go through each of these and select. So I believe it was the inventory view. If I select, you can see it only selects at one point. You can deselect it again. So if we go to band and box min, it's all there. So you can recenter these and put them where you want them. So the CE center, it does go through center of mass, but not the actual center of the object. So I kind of want to lower this a bit because the center of the model is probably about there. I think that's how it goes anyway. Do you like the balancing point? I don't know. I'm going to undo that actually because I don't know what I'm doing, but you probably know what these points are. But this inventory view one, I know I want to move this one. So I'm going to deselect that one. It's like the inventory view because I don't want to be looking at the side of the head like this. I want to look at the front of it. So I'm going to go to the top view like this. And the front of the head is here. So I'm going to move this one, but in like a, like a circular radius, just so you get like the same kind of distance from the model. So I'm going to put it about, actually I'm going to put it from this side view here, like that. And then probably a little touch lower. So I'll go to the Y view like this and drop it down to, let's say about there. I think that's how that works. So that's the memory LOD set and complete. What else have we got on this list to add? So we've got the memory. We've also got the levels of detail. So these are you know, like the, the level of detail of the model from the distance that you're looking at it. So obviously level six is like the mesh from over 100 meters away, which doesn't need to be high poly at all because it'll probably be about three pixels if you're looking at it in game. So the polys really do not matter whatsoever. So obviously the lower details like this, they, they can be as low as they want. You can even have just a, a plane. Anyway. I'm I'm going crazy. Let's just um trait the lods. And I got an issue because I'm in edit mode again. I already know that error because I've I've seen it before. So everything's done. Create selected lods. There you go. So all the lods now. If I go for each lod, the first lod is the default lod, which is 7k. Lod two is 4k. And then three is two thousand. Uh one thousand five hundred for four. 900 for level 5 and 500 for level 4. So, yeah, that would look like terrible if you're this close, but level 4, you're probably looking at this like a pixel, literally. So, everything there is done now. Everything's set. I can go to file. I don't have to go to file export, actually. There's a button here for it. So, this this export button is the same as Armor's file export, Armor Free P3D. I just moved it here to the panel so it's easier to access. I'm going to click that. I'm going to copy the name of the original model, Punk Skull. I'm going to put it here. So delete this, paste, export. There you go, that's done. So if we go to the data folder, look for Punk Skull. There we go, so I open this up in Object Builder. You can see it's all done. The only thing we need to change is double click on each of these and press F5. And what that'll do is it'll recalculate your normals. You need to do that on all your LODs or else all the normal texture will look a bit funky. So double click into it, F5, double click, F5. And lastly on the view pilot as well. 
F5. There we go. So we're at to one. I'm going to select it all. I'm going to go to my external viewer. And in the meantime, I'm going to grab a texture from JD Tools website. So it's not a texture, it's a color picker. So the default one that comes out of these tools at the moment is a like a rainbow texture that's built into Daisy's um, personal files. Uh, personal files. So Daisy's default file, sorry. So I'm going to make this get a pink color for now. So while that's still loading, I'm just going to copy this. Make sure I've actually copied that. And then let's go back to here. Let's see what it looks like with the default texture on when it comes straight out of the tools. Um, I don't seem to be seeing anything. It is really small, like I said. I can see something. There you go. So, like I said, it's a rainbow texture for now. But I'm going to show you how to retexture this inside of Object Builder to start off with. So, you can click on any of these. I'm going to click on Color which is the skull itself as its own texture. We're gonna to go to tools, mass texture and material naming. So this has got this, which is the rainbow color. And so you can set your own image texture path if you have one already. But I'm also gonna, I'm just gonna paste that color code in there to make it a purple color. And then close this. And then if we go back to here, you can see it's got the, the purple texture on it. I'm going to get a, a different image from here just to show you. So I'm going to, it's going to look terrible, but let's do the pineapple charm. Fuck it. So the color image for that. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I want to copy the path. So copy as path in here. Uh, tools, mass material renaming this one. And then you don't need the P drive or the quotes. You just need the, the folder name like this. So rename. There we've got like a, a little pineapple skull. So that's how easy it is to retexture it. And you can literally just save this entire model now and it'll be ready to go. That's ready to write into a config now. So also, I'm going to close this out of here. Hang on. Uh, close this one. And that should close. There we go. So in Blender, once you've got all this set up, you can go through each lodge yourself and go to materials and You'll have your, if you've already got your materials on there, it, um, you'll have these two like this. So you've got the two hidden selections, which is chain and, or chain, sorry, there, and shader. And as you can see down here, these are the textures that are automatically applied to it. So I could change this chain to the purple. I'm going to change colors in here, actually. So make the chain a gr greeny color, just... So I can show you how this works. So copy that, paste that in there. Or you could use color, pick a color like this. That's probably easier. And then do the same for here. You can do color and make it a pink. So now the, the chain color and shader are pink and green, but you have to do that for each of these, which is kind of annoying. So shader, shader is, the color so I'll just do it for lot one and two because I don't want to go through all of this but you can do us all inside of um these inside of blender itself so let me get this chain again I'm gonna change this to orange actually for this one and then on lot two I'll change it to uh, a light blue like that so I can go to file oh no, I know that's go to file again I can do it here. Export P3D. I'm going to save it as that again. And then go into object, the data and then object builder from here. So where are we? Punk skull. And because we just exported it from uh, Blender again, you will have to redo the normals. So I'm going to click on one and click on two and just press oh, double click to F5. Press F5 on each of them to recalculate normals. So I'll start off by going in with LOD1 into the material viewer. Let's have a look how this looks. Hopefully this looks pretty cool. Because we've got two different selections. If you're liking this, by the way, and you want to learn more or put some input into it and help me 
create more of the parts on the side here. So like, I don't understand all the memory points. I know there's a lot of them. But I've only put the ones in here that I've been personally taught. I can't just put stuff in there and not know what it is. So if you want to see some more stuff in here, just let me know and I can add them into it. And also with the armor tools, let's just say with this here, we've got all these. If you understand any of these, I'd also like to know about these as well because I want to I want to be able to make it so all these here are manageable to be added automatically into Blender. Because I, I personally don't like editing inside of here. Let's have a look at this one. So this was LOD1, I believe. Let's have a look. So it's all pink at the minute. Is that how I said it? Let's have a look. So chain. I might have said it. Uh, whatever color that is. Copy that. 716. And try this one. Yeah, I've put the same color on both for some reason. I think it's because it just defaults to export them all with the same texture. But you can go through now and I think the retexture side of things might have to be done in Bulldozer 4 now. But since you're redo redoing the normals, it should be pretty easy. So on that note, I think I'm going to end this video here. And hopefully get some more stuff added to this tonight maybe. I'm going to try and make a video tomorrow. Or maybe not tomorrow, but sometime in the next couple of days. I'll be importing a weapon using just this stuff here. And hopefully... Um, it will speed up everyone's modern process so much quicker. You can download a model from Sketchfab or CG Trader and import it pretty damn quick, just, just like this, because you just need to write the config now. And as for texturing, this is a shameless little plug. I do sell tools for texturing. So you've got the Daisy textures and stuff like that, and you can bake them out with the baker and bake out the color, no HQ, SMDIs, or my favorite one is the... Where is it? The Daisy Texture Animator. This is part of the Pro Bundle, this one. You can, it literally writes your entire config, all your RV mats and everything for you. And it's easy to manage. You set up your hidden selections of the name and which object is that hidden selection. The colors, you can set custom paths for all your textures. You can even animate textures, like different like frames and frames counts. This tool is very, very handy. And if you want to learn more about that, there's plenty of videos on my channel so far about this tool, about these tools and the texture ones. But there's my shameless little plug. I sponsored my video somehow. But thank you for watching, guys. And hopefully this has helped. And I've been recording with microphone volume this time. So the last video that you might have seen, I'm sorry there was no audio. This one's a little bit better. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.